What's up my Jake Paulers, Arm Media here, and today we are going to be going over Bengals. We have not talked about the Bengals since before the draft here, except for the uh, Madden ratings video a couple days ago when it leaked. I just got that out real quick. I didn't even use my microphone for that. So uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at uh, the offseason so far and seeing if they followed my uh, blueprint at all. And uh, we're also going to be looking at training camp. And then the meat and potatoes of the video is going to be us looking over the Bengals' wins and losses for the 2017 season. Um, so first off, uh, the offseason, uh, I would not – I said it did not go well. Um, I gave it a C grade because uh, I think getting rid of Pecco and Mauluga were two things I said that needed to happen, and it happened. Um, they re-signed LaFell, which I didn't think was that important, but he did do very well last year. And they re-signed Kirkpatrick on a deal that I think is uh, better for the team than uh, we think. And a lot of corners are going to base their contracts off of this later. Uh, they also signed Kevin Minter, which I think is a pretty decent deal. He's going to get a lot of tackles, even though he's not going to be a big playmaker like, say, Perfect. Um, but I think where the offseason sucked... And it was, that's why it gets the C grade, is they lose Andrew Whitworth and Zeitler, two guys I said are the guys we need to resign, and not LaFell. And I, I like Kirkpatrick more than a lot of people, um, because I was very harsh on him early in his career, and he's definitely developed. But they did not resign Whitworth or Zeitler, and as far as offensive linemen are concerned, they signed Andre Smith, one guy I said they should resign from. Uh, he was on the team two years ago, um, but he is playing second team right tackle right now, and Trey Hopkins is playing right guard, someone who has never started for the Bengals at all, and uh, on a team last year without Andre Smith for that matter, but they did have Kevin Zeitler, and they got J.J. Dielman in the draft, or Dielman, Dielman, I don't know how to say his name, because he's not that good of a player. So the offensive line is going to be much worse this year. Hopefully Jake Fisher, uh, Trey Hopkins, uh, Christian Westerman, and yes, Cedric O'Boyhee, who has been a pain, but hopefully he can step up at left tackle, and hopefully he doesn't do as bad as he did in that Christmas Day game or Christmas Eve game against the Texans last year. That's going to be on the offensive line. Uh, when most people are agreeing that Russell Bodine or Clint Bowling is our best offensive lineman, who were the second and third worst guys on the offensive line last year, that's when you know you have a problem. Did Audacity just freeze? Freeze, okay. Um, so, free agency, I give it a C grade. Uh, the draft looks a lot better. That's usually what the Bengals do. Their drafts look way better than... They're uh, free agency almost always. They usually never get free agents. Um, John, The first pick was John Ross. Um, people have said he's looked good in camp so far, even though he's not allowed to do drills with corners yet. Um, but I'm very concerned with his injuries, and I did not love the pick, and I still don't love the pick until John Ross really plays. Uh, Joe Mixon, everyone's saying he's amazing, and... Uh, if he's as good as people say he is, uh, we're going to forget about his incident really quick. Third round, Jordan Willis. Uh, everyone's saying he's a value pick. Madden thinks he's a value pick. Madden loves him. I haven't really heard anything about him yet, that he's being really good. So hopefully he can go to that end position for Michael Johnson, who's at the end of his career, and he can fill in just fine. Uh, Carl Lawson. Um, he's been getting looks at linebacker and end. So he might be switching depending which package Paul Gunther wants to run. Um, but expect to see him probably the rookie, unless Mixon really takes over that starting running back position to play the most. Uh, Josh Malone also in the fourth round. Excited to see what he can do. Um, if Cody Core or Tyler Boyd from last year really struggle, uh, you could see Malone getting a lot of playing time. Um, I do not want to... Uh I do not want to update Windows. I'm sorry. Um, I have to... This is going to probably get... Okay. Well, that thing's gone now. 
Um, sorry about that. That wasn't very professional. Um, and then the rest of the picks, uh, Ryan Glasgow, um, Brandon Wilson, Jordan Evans, Mason Shrek, J.J. Dealman. They're either going to be special teamers or you're not going to see them. Then finally in the fifth round, the kicker, Jake Elliott. He should win the kicking battle, but uh, Fat Randy Bullock is not going away yet. So that's a bit concerning if he can't beat out a guy who blew a game for us last year in a missed field goal. We need that kicking game to turn around. So I give the draft a cautiously optimistic B+. Plus. That's going to be a theme for this uh, Bengals team the whole year for me. It's cautiously optimistic because... It could easily be a 5 and 11 season. It could easily be an 11 and 5 season. It's just what we get out of this team. Uh, there are huge values in the second and fourth round and I, second, third and fourth rounds, but I love those uh, I love those picks. But uh, John Ross seemed like a risk at nine and there was no offensive lineman addressed at all in the offseason except for Andre Smith and a fifth rounder in this draft who is a center probably one of the more solid positions even though our center's not good all right so that was our little six minute off-season recap so now let's jump into the training camp news um there's a couple headlines here um and we're just going to go through them real quick until we hop back into the picks uh, or hop into our picks for the year um no one can cover aj green at all all the corners look like uh, freshmen, uh, high school freshmen guarding him. No one can stop him. I don't know if that means we all know A.J. Green's that good, but we see that he has a chip on his shoulder after his injury. Um, uh, if you watch clips of Joe Mixon, he seems unstoppable. They, they showed clips of him and Jeremy Hill running the exact same plays. Hill picking up about three or four yards and Mixon busting through for a touchdown um big headline kind of coming out of training camp kind of before it is that pac-man jones is gonna miss the first game i think he should have been suspended way worse for what he did so we're gonna get pac-man jones back after the ravens game um and then another another kind of concerning thing that happened is yesterday at camp vontez perfect got into a uh he tackled Giovanni Bernard low, even though I think he kind of slipped. He was trying to get him for the hit. But the point is, this was a non-tackling drill. And um, the running back coach and Tyler Eifert were not too happy about this tackle on Bernard. Um, Bernard says he, they, the two of them laughed it off afterwards. But the whole team got into a pretty much a shoving match afterwards, which is not something you want to see from a team. Especially because... Uh, if they lose control on the field, like they against another team, they can't even control themselves against each other. So that's a bit of a problem. We need this team to to gel together. However, Perfect and Bernard, they're all good. Um, the one thing I'm concerned about is that Marvin Lewis just said it's a waste of time, which is uh. Well, yeah, of course it's a waste of time, but you're the head coach and you need to break things up, and it's concerning. And he seems like he is way too relaxed about everything and could not care less and is just saying very obvious things. Maybe that's just Marvin saying things um, to the media that we want to that he wants to keep everything a lower profile, especially after an incident. But I think it's just him being incompetent. If he wins a playoff game this year, I'll take everything back I said about him. But we're far far away from a playoff win this team um other than that um john ross is looking better but he's still injured uh giovanni bernard and tyler eifert are both back to 100 percent and george iloka is will be out three to four weeks but should be ready to go for week one even though we will not see him in the preseason at all um Everyone has had high praise about rookies, Carl Lawson, Joe Mixon, and John Ross. The players have said that. And the O-line still looks bad. Um, there's a clip going around. I can't find it anymore. But it's Carl Lawson flying by Cedric Oboehe. And that is a bit concerning considering Lawson is a rookie. And this will be Oboehe's third year. 
So you really don't want to see that. Imagine if he's flying by Lawson, he's going to have a tough time defending guys like Jadavion Clowney, J.J. Watt, Von Miller, a lot of guys at the left tackle, or Whitworth is used to blocking, and Whitworth's gone now. So now we're going to go into our picks, my picks for the 2017 season. And I'm going to warn you here, I'm being very optimistic with these picks, and this is probably a little too high what's going to happen. But again, I'm being optimistic with these picks. Some of them I have losses that could be wins. Some of them are wins that probably should be losses, so let's jump into it. Week 1 against the Baltimore Ravens, I have the Bengals winning. The This is the Bengals' first home opener in Andy Dalton and A.J. Green's career here, which is, this is going to be their 7th year now? 6th or 7th year? Um, yeah, this... Maybe it's even... It's, it's been a while, though, and they have not had a home opener here in that whole time. Uh... They do not have Joe Flacco. They lost John Urschel. They do not have Steve Smith. They lost another left guard to injury. They lost two of their tight ends uh, to injury, Max Williams and Dennis Pitta. This offense is going to be very bad, and I expect the defense to ball out against whoever they send out there, whether it be Ryan Mallett or if they decide to send Colin Kaepernick. Either way, I expect the Bengals to win this game, especially with no Joe Flacco. I have them going 1-0 to start the season. Week 2 versus the Texans, I have a loss. Um, if Cedric Oboehe cannot block Carl Lawson right now, he will not be able to block J.J. Watt and Jadavion Clowney, who might want to break Andy Dalton in half, especially after Dalton had his feelings hurt or whatever. Uh, on the radio or TV, whatever, afterwards, after J.J. Watt called him the Red Rider BB gun, which, whatever. I'm a big Dalton fan either way. Uh, plus, this is going to be a night game on a short week. I have the Texans taking this one, even if either Tom Savage or Deshaun Watson are going to be their quarterback. Next week... The O-line and rookies still have to figure things out in Lambeau versus Aaron Rodgers. I don't like the Bengals' odds in this game. Could be an upset, but I don't see it. Aaron Rodgers is better than the Bengals' defense, just alone. I'm going to say 1-2 and two Bengals next week. Cleveland. This one, this one's, a, this one's closer than I think. They're at Cleveland. This could be a problem game. But it's very young into the season, and I th I think the Bengals get this one. It's going to be very close in Cleveland. They might be winning into the third quarter, uh, but Kaiser and Kessler still need to figure things out. They're probably going to get picked off once or twice. I just can't give the Browns a win here. Uh, I kind of want to, even though I don't because I'm a Bengals fan. I won't. I'm going to say Bengals 2-2. Two and two. Next week against the Bills. Um, this is a game we lose usually if we start getting our injuries or we can't get things going, uh, like stupid stuff like special teams or um, like just basic stuff, special teams, injuries, just common things that happen every now and then. But I think our defense is enough to start stop Buffalo who I Tyrod Taylor is has been tough for Cincinnati and Shady McCoy and Sammy Watkins who's possibly back but I don't know if the Bills defense can necessarily stop us plus we're in Cincinnati I just think the Bills pass rush can't do quite enough I don't think they have enough firepower on offense this one's another close one now that I'm talking about it I feel like it could very well be a loss I'm going to give Cincinnati the win here. I'm going to say they go to 3-2. and two. At Pittsburgh, this one's easy. It's a loss. I hate losing to Pittsburgh, but it's at Heinz Field. It's always a tough environment. Hopefully Big Ben's injured by this point. I don't see us winning if he's in the game. 
Colts. Maybe switch this one in the Bills game, but I have us losing to the Colts. Not sure what it is about the Colts, but after that uh, wild card loss three years ago, I just cannot see the Bengals coming close to the Colts in the game. Uh, I have to give this one to Andrew Luck. Uh, even though the Colts have gotten probably a lot worse since then, T.Y., the whole offense is going to be all right, even though our pass rush can probably get to them. Colts' defense isn't anything great, but I think it's enough to hold off the Bengals. They're going to fall to 3-4. and four. Jaguars. Um, the Bengals lose another disappointing one. They go into Jacksonville. They're going to show a young defense who doesn't have that well of a pass rush besides um, Malik Malik Jackson. That's not who it is. One one of their one of their defensive linemen is more of a veteran, but I think against a young defensive line, I think we can come in, show them who's boss, and beat Jacksonville here. This is another one that could be a loss, especially because Jacksonville is improving. Plus, it's in Jacksonville, even though there might be as many Bengals fans in the stadium as Jaguars fans. Um, I see us winning though. I just can't see us losing the Jaguars yet. Titans. I see us losing this game. This team got a lot better in the offseason through the draft and through free agency, getting guys like Logan Ryan uh, to help their corners improve. Mariota's been getting a lot better, and with a new weapon, Corey Davis, he's going to be a lot more dangerous. Um, they had a 9-7 a and seven campaign last year. I think they're only getting better. You can probably see... Th- I think there's a good chance they win the AFC North this year. I will give them the victory. So the Bengals lose. They're going to fall to 4-5. and five. Broncos. This is another tough one. Uh, I'm going to give this one to Cincinnati, though. I cannot really tell you what's happening in Denver. But what I think it is, is a lot of people are getting old, and they don't have a quarterback. Think about it. Aqib Talib's getting up there. Chris Harris, even though still one of the best corners in the league, is starting to get up there. Uh, their defensive lineman, they have Pekka on there, and he's one of the guys that could be featured. The offensive line in Denver is the opposite of great, even though they've added, um, what's that dude's name, Garrett Bowles, who is probably going to be a decent player. Wish the Bengals would have thought about him at nine. But... They don't have a quarterback. It's Trevor Simeon or Paxton Lynch. Probably by this point, I'm going to say Paxton Lynch. <laughs> if you want to call it an upset, I guess you do. But I'm going to take the Bengals. I'm not scared of Denver's pass rush, at least pass rush, at least right now. Hopefully, hopefully three guys to Von Miller is enough to keep him away from Dalton. Uh, We get Cleveland again now. I'm going to give us the win. Same story as before. I'm uh, not quite ready to give us that win against the Browns. Again, I think they could surprise us in Cleveland early, but I think in Cincinnati we're fine, and I think we're going to get that win, even if, oh boy, he has to guard a much better Miles Garrett. We go to 6-5 now. Uh, next game is a night game against the Steelers in Paul Brown Stadium. This one, I think this one's going to be the shock of the season. I'm sick of us losing to Pittsburgh. We're on, we've, we're on a, a four-game losing streak. It'd be five games if we lose to them earlier in the season. I think we snap it here in Paul Brown Stadium. We surprise everyone. We especially surprise the Steelers. It's a night game at Paul Brown, the same scene as that night game, that Saturday playoff game that the Bengals blew. I think their emotion in this game, instead of getting the better of them this time, it'll be just enough to surpass the Steelers and get the job done in a hard-fought match. Both teams are going to be banged up by this point. Give me Cincinnati. They're going to go to 7-5 and five on the season. The Bears. Um... Bengals are already have a better record than in 20, uh, 2016, and uh, they're, they're not going to stop improving against the Bears. Uh, I think the Bears are going to be the worst team in the NFC this year. Yes, even better, or even worse than the 49ers, 
who I think at least have some pieces to work with. I think Brian Hoyer's pretty underrated, and at least they have a decent receiver in Pierre Garçon. Um, man, they did not pay like 15 mil a year to Mike Lennon. Bengals go to 8 and 5. This one is another toss up against the Minnesota Vikings. We play old coach or old Bengals coach Mike Zimmer. And I do not think the student is quite ready to surpass the master or the, uh, yeah, I guess you can say the master. Um,. I know it's not fair to predict injuries this early in the season, but I think by this point, Sam Bradford's probably out with an injury. And I don't think Dalvin Cook and Latavius Murray have enough to destroy the Bengals. I think the Bengals' offense does just enough against the Vikings' defense. Uh, this might be like a this might be like a nine to six type of game. Um, hopefully, Jake Elliott can make some kicks or Randy Bullock, depending who wins that battle. I think the Bengals go up to 9-5 and five on the year. Detroit Lions, Marvin Jones comes back to Cincinnati, and he's mad. He still doesn't have that playoff win from last year. And Matt Stafford and him are going to show the Bengals' defense who's boss. But Andy and AJ also want to show the Lions' defense who's boss. But I think Andy Dalton's going to be sacked one too many times. And I think the Lions are going to get this one done with too much of a good offense. The Bengals will fall to 9-6 and six here. And for the last game against the Ravens, I'm going to go on a little rant here. I don't know why everyone is so high on Baltimore. This team is its way worse than what I see. I do not think Jeremy Macklin is a Steve Smith at all. he I don't see him being a Steve Smith at all. They do not have Kenneth Dixon for the year, probably their best running back. They do not have Dennis Pitta. They do not have John Urschel. They lost a guard who I can't pronounce his name, but he's out. They don't have Flacco for three to four games, where they're probably going to lose uh, at least two or three during that stretch. This offense is going to be stagnant this year. Perryman might be able to step up. Terrence West might be able to step up. Mike Wallace maybe, but he's getting older and probably is going to lose a step. I just don't see how this offense is going to do anything. And plus the defense, it's going to be good. They lose Timmy Jernigan and Elvis Doomerville, two of the better pass rushers on their team, and Terrell Suggs and Eric Weddle are getting way older. They're going to need the rookies to play like third or fourth year players to even have a chance for this team to make the playoffs, in my opinion. John Harbaugh is a good coach, but Joe Flacco is an elite, and he's going to be out for three to four games. The offense and the defense both got worse during the offseason, in my opinion. I don't I don't see this team going much anywhere. I see the Bengals going to 10-6 and six at the end of the year. What does that mean? I think 10-6, and six, again, is being very optimistic. Sorry, I got a call from my mama there. Um, but, yeah, that's that's the entire season. I think that's 10-6. That's optimistic. They could be better than that. Probably going to be worse. Um, is that good enough for the wild card? Maybe. Uh, the AFC West and the AFC South are going to be really good this year. And maybe, maybe even the AFC East with the Bills and the Dolphins. But even if it's not good enough to make the playoffs, you see a team with a four-game improvement from last year, four more wins than last year, with a much younger team. They lose a lot of veterans from last year. But with the offensive weapons, I think 10 wins is definitely possible. So that's my prediction for the Bengals this year, 10-6. and six. Don't worry, we're going to be talking about Bengals preseason and if not the preseason, definitely the regular season games throughout the year. Thank you guys for tuning in. The Hall of Fame game is tomorrow night. I will probably not be watching it because I could not care less. But when the Bengals preseason starts, I will definitely be excited and ready to go. 
again, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, guys, peace.